Welcome to the channel, I'm the Scottish Astrologer and in this video I'm going to talk about involution, evolution and reincarnation. So to begin with I'm going to explain to you the process of involution and evolution briefly in relation to one another. Now as most people already know about evolution okay, and the basics of how that works, most people already know clearly about that. But involution may be new to a lot of people listening to this. Now, involution works slightly in the same way as evolution, but in the total opposite direction. And involution talks about the process of spirit getting further away from the source from where it came and so lower. Where evolution talks about the process of matter getting more complex and advanced and so higher. So you see how they sort of work entanglement with each other but in the opposite direction to one another. So spirit originates from what is known as the ether, okay, nothingness, silence and stillness. Now spirit is able to come into physical existence through what is known as the central sun which sits at the very centre of our universe. Now the central sun acts as a sort of gateway or point of access from the ether into the physical universe and can then, it can then begin its process of involution, okay, into matter. And this works by spirit first incarnating into the most simplest and purest forms of matter, okay, such as minerals. And then after many cycles, slowly but surely incarnating into greater and more complex forms of matter, like plants, okay, plant life. And then after that, animals, and finally into the most advanced and complex matter there is, which is the human body. Now, simultaneously, while the process of involution is taking place, the process of evolution is also occurring, where matter, over many cycles, keeps evolving and getting more and more advanced and complex. And like I said, advancing from mineral to plant to animal to human, basically changing from inanimate to animate, from still and silent to restless and sound, or restlessness and sound. Now the qualities of spirit in its purest form from the ether into matter is seen in its first incarnation into matter again in the form of a mineral which is motionless and silent and so inanimate. Then spirit's next incarnation is in the form of plant life, okay, then in the form of animals and then in the form of a human being, okay, so getting more animate each time, okay, and each time spirit incarnates into another life form from mineral all the way to human, it gets further away from the source from where it originated and from where it came. And it also gets lower in the pure spiritual scale, but higher in the complexity and potential of the material scale. So in other words, the further away the spirit is from source, the more advanced the body is in which it can incarnate into. So human beings actually have the most diluted spirits, if you like, or spirits which are furthest away from God or from the source from where they came. But we have the potential through our bodies and minds, okay, advanced abilities to either get closer to God or source or to turn away from God or source. It's exact, it's entirely up to us because we have free will, okay, we have intelligence, memory, consciousness, everything above which an animal has everything we need in order to make conscious free will decisions and choice okay 
in this respect towards God or not. And this is why the wise and spiritual people you will find go inward and meditate, which involves silence and stillness, which as I mentioned is the pure spiritual state. They use meditation to escape matter, which is very difficult, but the, a very difficult thing to do, and so a harder path. But the unwise or unspiritual people remain always outwardly, and are blinded and seduced by matter, which is evident in the world today with materialism and consumerism. Okay, that's how it's manifested itself. Now, this path of materialism is the easiest path, and so the most common path that people decide to take. Okay, again, that's why the world has produced so much consumerism, capitalism, materialism. Okay, because this is the easy path. So people tend to take the easy path rather than the hard path. Not only the easy path, the more enjoyable path, okay? So that's why people are on that path. But again, the fact is that we can choose which way to go. We can either work towards returning to spirit and escaping from matter, okay? Returning to source even and escaping from matter. Or we can turn our backs on spirit and return to matter. It's entirely up to you, entirely up to us, okay? So again, just to recap, minerals have the purest spirits, but the least advanced bodies, and human beings have the least pure spirits, but the most advanced bodies with the ability to choose between spirit or matter, okay? And just to clarify, why it is that our spirits are less pure or much further away from source than that of a mineral or any other life form. And this is because all of our individual spirits have been on a very, very long journey of reincarnation, again beginning as minerals, then plant life, then animals, and then finally human beings. So you see how our spirits are far from source and their original state, okay, when they finally can incarnate into a human being. It's a long way from source. So, as you have already probably gathered, reincarnation flows in a certain direction and can't go in the opposite direction once the process of incarnation into the basic mineral form has taken place for this specific cycle of incarnation and reincarnation. Now you can reincarnate again and again in the certain level in which you are currently on at the time. So for example, when you are on the human level of reincarnation, you can keep reincarnating as a human being until you finally decide or choose to move on. But an animal can't return back to a plant, etc. Okay, we can only move up a level or remain on a level, okay, for as long as we need to be on that level. But never going back, that's a false teaching, in my opinion, of reincarnation, saying that you can go back, okay, so you can be a human and become an animal afterwards. It doesn't work like that, as far as my understanding goes, okay. But once the process of incarnation and reincarnation is completed here on earth, your finer spiritual atoms can indeed get seduced, okay, back into matter again, but not here on earth, okay. Somewhere else in space and time in another system is where this temptation and potential seduction back into matter can reoccur. So again, what I'm saying to you is once you have completed the full cycle of incarnation and reincarnation here on Earth and have finally decided you don't want to come back to Earth and you want to escape matter, okay? As I'm saying, in a different place in space and time in another system, this temptation into or potential seduction back into matter can reoccur, but it won't be on our particular solar system, it'll be someone else entirely in the universe. 
now there are many many people who are in their first incarnation as a human being in a human body okay from an animal okay so they're this is the first time they've ever been a human being they've been on the animal level before been constantly reincarnating as animal until finally moving up to the human level so there's a lot of people here right now who are on that level just first timers is what i call them and these are usually the people who are far from being considered spiritual people as they are now as they are new sorry okay to the power of the human body and they so abuse it okay but there are, are also many people who have been reincarnated as human beings more than once and these people tend to be more spiritual and more wise and these particular people are the ones who are a lot more likely to choose to move on after death and not be seduced again by matter here on earth as they are now sick of being stuck in the cycle of matter and truly desire to return to source and so will move on beyond the earth now the soul is something which is entwined with the spirit and is with the spirit throughout all incarnations and reincarnations acting as a kind of memory card if you will or if you like which stores all experiences which you have had throughout all your incarnations and reincarnations as many various different life forms and in many various different bodies and all this information is stored within what we know as the subconscious because if we were fully conscious of all this information it would surely highly overwhelm and confuse us and would totally mess up human nature in my opinion so everything i've just explained to you here this is just my personal understanding of involution evolution and reincarnations okay and you might disagree with me about this okay and that is fine as i'm not trying to convince anyone of anything i'm merely just showing what i understand to be truth okay folks i think that's all for this video a huge thanks for watching please like share and subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell at the right hand side of the subscribe button until next time take care